Kia ora and welcome to CIO Leadership Live. I'm your host, Cathy O'Sullivan, the editor for CIO New Zealand. My guest today is Mandy Simpson, Chief Digital Officer at Z Energy New Zealand. Tanakwe, Mandy, how are you doing today? Kia ora, Cathy. Uh, really good to be here. Thanks. Oh, good, good. And hope all is well in Wellington today. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about your role at Z Energy New Zealand and what your team does there? Yeah, definitely. So um, I think most people will be aware of uh, Z Energy. We're uh, um, you know, reasonably well known as a fuel retailer. Uh, that is um, really the starting point of where we're heading in the coming years as we start to think about uh, the transition to a low carbon future for New Zealand. Um, and another thing that's really relevant for us at the moment, um, Z was uh, bought out by Ampol. Uh, last year, and so we are, you know, now part of the broader Ampol group, which also has that same ambition uh, to move forward to uh, decarbonising transport. The Chief Digital Officer role for Z encompasses all areas of technology. I know these titles like vary from company to company, so not everyone is quite sure when I say Chief Digital Officer. They, they're like, do you just mean the, you know, the the app or <laughs> or that sort of thing? But really, all areas of technology for Z. Um, whether that's customer facing or looking after our supply chain or um, the corporate technology. So the energy sector is undergoing a lot of transformation and digital itself, you know, is transforming all the time. The word transformation is thrown around, you know, as if it's just a given, it just happens within an organization. But in reality, it's hard work. It's, it's hard to do. How has that approach taken shape in your own career? Yeah, so I mean, it's, I think it's probably been uh, most obvious in this role, but transformation and change in particular has been something that's been part of every role I've ever done. So uh, one of the things most people don't know about me is this is my first pure technology role. So previously, uh, I have done chief operating officer roles, uh, chief financial officer roles. I'm an accountant by background. Um, I've spent most of my career working in financial services. Uh, all The thing that is the same in every organization that I've worked for is that they have been high change organizations, either ones that are going through um, sector wide transformation like Zed is now, uh, or um, you know, high growth organizations, uh, particularly in the kind of startup or um, scale up areas. So transformation has been really important in all of those. And one of the things that um, I love about that is it means that, you know, you can really bring uh, your experience into the role and, uh, and really uh, look for ways to improve things relatively quickly. Uh, and yeah, that, that um, uh, areas of high change are something that definitely suit me. They don't suit everybody. And I think, you know, there are leaders who have a preference for um, being involved in organizations that are maybe a bit more steady state, but I'm definitely a bit of a change junkie. That's good when you work in a high change organization. Um, yeah. So walking back from that end product of transformation, from your experience in, you know, that variety of roles and um, business roles, um, what do you think are some of the key steps CIOs must take along the way? You know, is there ever just a starting point to kick something off? I think most CIOs will know that um, that technology, like we might feel like there's a starting point to transformation, but in fact, it's been an ever transforming landscape. So if you are working in technology, you've been in change forever. So, you know, the, the technology itself is changing, but also how we use technology in businesses and how we think about technology has changed such a lot in the past decade that I don't think there's ever exactly a starting point. Uh, but really, I think the most important thing is to, to start where you are. So like not to um, wish for something different or wish you could go backwards, but really just to start with what you have um, and take that as the playing field that you're going to play from. Um, I often find people get really stuck when they say, oh, well, if only we had more people, or if only we had more money, or if only senior leadership would listen to us, or like whatever it is. But the fact is that that's the playing field that you've got. And uh, in lots of other areas of our lives, 
we don't take that approach. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's much easier, I think, if you can just accept what you have and move forward from there. So speaking of getting stuck, you know, it is challenging change. So what are some of those kind of common roadblocks that CIOs should be mindful of and try and either avoid along the way or have a plan in place for how to tackle them? Yeah, I think that one of the main things uh, many organizations face is the position of technology within the organization. So how well respected or well thought of are your technology team to start with? Because until you've built trust into, you know, this this team is well thought of, is trusted to do what it says it's going to do, it's very hard to make significant change. And so uh, my starting point when I joined Zed, and um, uh, funnily enough, the same is true actually for finance teams. It's a, it's a very similar position. So my starting point in every organization that I've ever worked with a finance team is to be, how can you become a trusted partner to this organization? I think once you're there, everything gets easier. So you can start to have your expertise be seen within the organization as something that moves the organization forward rather than you being, you know, the person who's saying no to everything or um, whatever those uh, stereotypes end up being. Um, That underlying level of trust is what starts to move you forward. And you have to kind of build that a little piece at a time by doing what you you say you're going to do over, you know, weeks, months, years. Yeah, absolutely. Moving away from that department of no um, status that some IT teams are associated with. Um, So I'm curious then, Mandy, um, do you see there ever being an end date to transformation? You know, is it, do you like to see transformation as an evolution or, you know, just projects with deadlines and milestones? And if it is an evolution, then how do you manage that change fatigue that might set in? amongst staff if you are in a a high change organization? Yeah, I think this really depends on what you think the transformation is. So I have a particular view on this, but I recognize it's quite, it it might be different to other people's. So my view on transformation, um, digital transformation in particular, is that we are moving towards an end point. Now, lots of people will say, oh, you know, it's ever changing. And I agree that from a technology point, it is ever changing. But to me, the end point is an agile organization. Like, and I don't mean agile as in, you know, the the way that we think about doing work, but a, a nimble organization. And so if you if you can transform your organization to the point where it is able to rapidly respond to whatever comes at it, then I think that is the transformation. And so is there an end point to that? Like there's always tweaks along the way, but I think you can see organizations move from being very static to being very able to uh, to really deal with whatever comes at them. That's so relevant to us at said because you can look forward and say in 30 years time or 40 years time, there's no future in hydrocarbons in New Zealand or potentially in the world you might say that might happen in 10 years or 20 years, or it's not going to happen for a hundred years. I have no idea which of those is true. And I have to be ready for all of them. And we have to, um, we also don't know what the replacements are going to be. Are we looking at electricity? Are we looking at hydrogen? You know, what, are, what what's the role of biofuels in here? Um, all of those things are very rapidly changing. Uh, as we sit and talk today, Literally yesterday, the Prime Minister announced that the biofuels mandate is now going to be cancelled. And so we're like, okay, how do we respond to that? What is our thinking about that? Does that actually change at all what we're going to do? And so as an organisation, not just the technology part, but the whole organisation, we need to be able to move forward quickly. That to me is the goal of transformation, to move your culture of your organisation forward to there. And the technology parts of the transformation are just kind of ongoing along the way. 
Absolutely. The importance of agility across the organization, not just in IT, as you say. So you mentioned earlier the importance of trust and and building up that reputation of your technology team within the wider business. So can you tell us as chief digital officer in what ways you collaborate and influence, you know, that that wider organization and, and the leadership team? Yeah. Well, firstly, I recognize the privilege that I have of sitting on the leadership team at Zed and that not every CIO has that um, opportunity. So, uh, you know, the the fact that I can sit in the Zed leadership team, that I can hear everything that's going on, that I have an opinion on everything that is going on. Like I don't just sit in the leadership team and talk about technology. I make it my job to understand all of the things that are going on in our organization. And uh, first, this is my first role in the energy sector. And so there was a very, very steep learning curve at the start of that as I tried to understand uh, everything from uh, fuel supply through to uh, the customer facing parts of our business. And to be fair, there are heaps that I don't yet um, fully understand uh, in that space. But that was part of that. It's like you can't influence if you don't understand the business that you're trying to influence. Um, And then really getting alongside each of those senior leaders and saying, how can I help? What has your experience been of digital in this organization? And what would you like it to be? And how can we help move that forward? One of the things that I did when I first arrived at Zed was I put in place um, business partners, which is common in some organizations and, and not in others. But very much the technology team at Zed when I arrived was kind of sat in a corner and doing its own thing. It was also a relatively small part of the organization. So it was um, around about 45 people. And yet every business area within Zed employed its own technology contractors. And so there were 140 contractors in the organization doing IT and yet only 40 full-time, full-time staff. So uh, those two things of kind of getting alongside those senior leaders and saying, how can we help you? And then slowly starting the process of shifting that balance so that we had a a more significant workforce here that could be applied to those issues uh, without having to go to the market for contractors on a kind of individual basis. Oh, it sounds like a shocking shadow IT um, operation going on there. Good that you got got it. Yeah, it was, and it was a bit of a... Sorry, it was a bit of a surprise, I think, when I came in, um, not only to me, but I think to the leadership team, when each person can only see their part of it and they don't see the whole, being able to kind of show what that whole looked like and the impact it was having, not only financially, but also on the culture of the organization, when you know it, uh, you want to build a digital culture but the vast majority of the people working in that are leaving every six months. Mm. Um, it, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to do that. Now, technology has been brought into sharp focus in a lot of organizations since the pandemic. How do you think the role of CIO has changed since, you know, the horror days of, of 2020 when everyone was told to work from home? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I suspect that it's probably the one that is most different for each CIO. So, um, you know, please take this as very much Zed's perspective and and my perspective on that. Um, My role uh, was helped a lot by where we were as the pandemic hit. So as an organization, we were already um, able to work fully remote. Um, the, The shift was shocking, but also, um, technology wise relatively straightforward culturally still of course incredibly shocking as it was for everybody Um, like most organizations I think we have not gone back to fully office-based we now run a hybrid workforce and so culturally my role has changed quite a bit I spend a lot more time doing this (laughs) than I did um, you know and a lot less time on in-person meetings um, that's given my team a lot more flexibility about how they work. And uh, at Zed, we've also chosen to allow each team uh, to make their own decisions about how they want to work together. Um, that requires such uh, trust and flexibility from all levels of leadership that 
it's taken us quite a while to get there, but it seems to be working really well. Um, I think that my role has, you know, in terms of the uh, day to day, has probably not changed that much from what it was at the start. It's still my role to look forward to what's coming, to make sure that our strategy is managing that, to match our capabilities to that. Um, I just have more flexibility, I think, in how to do that. Interestingly, there was a really uh, difficult patch in the middle of that. So I think most organizations went through this. If you think about Zed's revenue, you know, it sort of fell off a cliff in the, in the middle of the pandemic as everybody stopped driving, as all of the flights stopped, you know, our revenue, like, you know, really, really dropped. And so uh, I got the chance to go back and use some of my financial markets expertise as we went through a capital raise and then obviously the uh, the acquisition by Ampol. So um, I've had an interesting three years in terms of my actual day-to-day -day role, but the C. DO role itself has probably not changed as much as you might think. So, you know, there are a lot of titles out there now for CIOs, you know, some are CTOs and they do look after the IT function, some are CDOs, some are CIOs. But what do you think are some of the key attributes, regardless of that title, of a modern day CIO when it comes to leadership? Yeah, so I think um, the, the biggest thing is the, uh, in the this feel of the wider leader. So leading an organization, not a technology function, I very much see my role and all of the Z leadership team's role as you know, we lead Z. I don't lead just the technology function of Z. I, along with my colleagues, lead Z. And so that ability to step up and out and see the wider picture um, is really important. The communication skill, this translator function, technology to, um, you know, the strategic objectives of the business and back, and that making that connection uh, is, is incredibly important. Helping every level of the organization prioritize. So I'm not sure there was ever a time that we had enough resources to do everything that we wanted to do, but that feels more acute now than it maybe has done in the past. And so that like, you know, really strong push to prioritize what it is that needs doing and make sure that that's fully agreed across a whole organization. Um, if anybody ever finds the perfect way to do that, I'd love to hear from them. But I spend a lot of my time thinking about that process. And we have at Zed a really strong delineation between prioritization, which is done um, uh, by our business leaders and then planning, which is kind of done by the technology team and the various uh, team members of the areas that they're planning for. Uh, and that was, that it's taken a long time for that to bed in really, but it is running really nicely now. And that means I can spend a lot more of my time focusing on prioritization, knowing that the organization will plan to that, um, uh, to, the, to the prioritization list that we've given. Now, you mentioned resources can be, you know, scant at times, and particularly when it comes to, um, you know, there's a lot of competition for IT talent at the moment. Um, so how are you creating that internal culture in your team that really helps people grow and thrive? Yeah, I, I think that we are, we're very lucky at Zed because that is a company-wide culture. Um, people come to Zed to learn, uh, we have people, I mean, like everywhere, you know, you have people who spend a couple, two or three years within Zed, but we also have people who've been here for 35 plus years, um, you know, right back from when Zed was Shell. Um, it is a culture where you can move around the organization and um, get some entirely different parts to your career. Uh, Within the digital team, you know, we run a strong intern and graduate program. Uh, we have you know, really clear career pathways then through uh, for those individuals. Um, and, and we are totally happy whether those are into us at, through and continuing or whether they're into, into Z through and out to another organization, recognizing that people don't necessarily want to spend decades of their career with the same organization anymore. Um, I think that one of the things that Zed does, which is really different to anything that I have ever come across before, 
is recognizing that every person is a leader. So we talk about what are the leadership attributes that you should have at every stage of your career. And I think that makes the transitions through people's career a little bit easier. It's not like you suddenly become a leader partway through. We talk about leadership, you know, from day one of you arriving in this organization. And then just helping people to think about their career, uh, not in terms of necessarily the roles that they want to have, but in terms of what they want to be doing. Are you the sort of person who wants to, you know, spend most of your time uh, in a kind of people leadership type function or are you more of a technical leader? What is it that you want to, like really helping people understand themselves um, is something that we spend quite a bit of, of time thinking about. And another factor when it comes to, you know, high performing teams is, is diverse teams. So mm-hmm. what practical things do you think can be done to attract more people to IT and tech roles, you know, regardless of, of, of their background? How can we make it more interesting for people and, and show them that there are great jobs out there? Yeah, um, that's a really interesting question. And I am, um, um, it's sort of, to me, that question only touches on part of the problem. So uh, how do we attract people into the industry? I think we have to do uh, a really good job of showcasing the, the diversity of roles. So like, the fact people still think, you know, our oh, technology role is like go and be a coder. So really helping people understand the wide diversity of roles that sit in the, uh, the digital organizations within uh, my area, and, and every organization is slightly different on this, but within my area, we have everything from our, you know, developers, testers, um, uh, integration, but also through BA, Scrum Masters, product management, design, all of those areas, um, data and analytics, all sit within our digital team. And so there's kind of something for everyone in there. So showcasing that is really important, but also showing people that they have a home within the organization is as important. So it's not just that the role is available, but you as a person are welcome here is also really important. So Zed does that again in ways that are different to anything I've seen before. We run um, uh, networks that help people find their home within our organization. Uh, and those networks are, so for example, you can see from this, I'm a member of our Rainbow Network here. Our network comprises both members of the Rainbow community and their allies. And that allyship is a very different thing to how I've ever seen this done before. So you specifically become an ally to the Rainbow Network by completing some learning that's important to that. And then by... Um, uh, visibly making yourself, uh, you know, making people aware that you've become part of that. We run one of those for Rainbow. We run one for our uh, uh, Maori community. Uh, we run one for women in leadership. We run run one for uh, neurodiversity. And so helping people find their home within our organization has become really important to us. So, Mandy, when you reflect back on your own career, are there any um, mistakes or things you've done that when you when you when you look back, even though they, they might be uncomfortable to think about, they really shaped you as a leader and you've really learned from them? Yeah, I um, I have made so many mistakes in my career. I think it's it's just like I look back and um, particularly when I look right back to the very early stages of my career. So I started my career with Deloitte. Um, in London and then with the London Stock Exchange and those uh, that was you know eight years of my career and I am astonished (laughs) at some of the things that I did then particularly the London Stock Exchange gave me my first people management role Um, I was only 25 years old Uh, I had a team of 40 odd people um, and I was possibly the worst people <laughs> manager um, ever. You know, I was uh, I was attempting to do my best at the time, but I look back now and I'm like, oh my goodness, some of those mistakes that I made. Um, I think the biggest 
the thing that I learned the most was I, I had this like almost hard line when I was younger that I didn't do politics. Like I thought politics was something that, um, you know, was the worst thing in an organization. And that if I could just tell people the facts and get them to hear it, that, you know, they would totally be on my side. And I just, I did not understand how organizations worked. And so I think if I could go back and learn that sooner, if nothing else, my life would have been much easier. But also, you know, the people around me who must have just thought, who is this idiot who thinks she can come and tell me what to do? And that understanding of the um, wider ecosystem that the organization has to play within and the uh, just the challenges that set the, the multiple um, uh, competing interests that are sat within the organization very reasonably, not seeing politics as a bad thing, but actually just the playing out of those competing interests within an organization. Um, I couldn't do the job that I do now if it wasn't for that. And I, I wish I'd learned it a lot sooner. Absolutely. And so as Chief Digital Officer, is there any advice that you'd like to give to, you know, someone who might be aspiring to be a CIO or a CTO or a CDO? What would you tell them? I would say um, get the widest experience you can <clears throat> because the role of CDO, CTO, CIO is at its heart a leadership, a wide leadership role. And so I think people worry that if they step outside of their technical role, it's hard to kind of get back in and, and those sort of things. And I would say, like, not that. If somebody offers you an opportunity to go and do something really different, go and do it because those experiences are what, in the end, give you the this kind of, you know, wider view of the world that really helps. And um, a shout out for all of the people like me out there, go for the roles that scare you. Like that, these are, I have had num a number of roles now where I have, um, you know, put my hat in the ring, not really expecting that somebody would give me that. And then when you get it, you're like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? And that's where you learn the most. Uh, I've had people, Mike Bennett's in particular here, our chief exec, who have really trusted me with big steps in my career. And um, those, if you don't put your hand up for those, of course you'll never get them. And those are the things where I have really learned um, huge amounts. Excellent advice. Feel the fear and, and just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so finally, then, Mandy, um, you know, we've got a, a big year ahead, you know, possibly um, recession coming our way here in New Zealand. We may have, you know, a change of government or indeed, you know, we are seeing policy changes as, as it stands. So what's important to you in the months ahead? So I um, will go back to my advice right from the start and take it myself. We're just going to start from where we are. Um, accept the playing field that we've got, whatever that turns out to be. If we have a recession ahead of us, that obviously has a significant impact on Z. Um, and, uh, and more importantly, I think, a really significant impact on all of our customers. So, you know, the important things for me in the months ahead are how do we continue to look after those customers throughout whatever is coming for them? Uh, and how do we continue to stay as nimble as we can through you know, what might be a year of significant change, uh, but also like staying true to the longer term objective. We, it is our intention to transition this company to be a force for a low carbon future. And we're well on our way to doing that. And regardless of what happens in terms of recession, et cetera, we have to keep our eye on that. Uh, and so kind of staying, staying true to that strategic objective um, while playing the playing field that we've got. It's a, it's a lofty goal and we wish you all the, all, all the best with it. Mandy Simpson, Chief Digital Officer at Z Energy New Zealand, thank you so much for your time today.